I have to say this. Most of our black millionaires can't join us in this operation. Right. I'll tell you why. Because most of the people who are profiting off of our condition are the same people who sponsors most of what they do. That's right. Me and did. Oh yeah, like Target. That's one of them. Walmart. Right. And all you gotta do is look at the annual banquets of most of our people and you'll see who their sponsors are. And those are the people who are profiting off of our demise. Right. And so if they in bed with them and they're their allies, they ain't finna say nothing. So if we don't do this ourselves, right. if we the grassroots, if we don't get up and move forward and for some sort of united front, we can forget it. Don't say I believe the children are our future, teach them well and let them lead the way. What are they leading with? What foundation are you laying? What are they looking at you doing that they're not repeating? These children that are doing what they're doing, they can fall out of the sky. Teach, teach. That's right. They can fall out of the sky. So, our duty, our job, I'm speaking to us in this room. See, I'm not speaking to everybody black. Come on. Mm. I'm not going to do that. I want to make sure that I'm talking to who's in front of my face. All right. Come on. Come because on. I'm challenging us to do better. Yeah. Right. Then whatever you're doing right now, I'm challenging us to do better. We do better. Because no longer should we be waiting on some individual to lead the charge and then the enemy snuff them out and we go all back to our own little uncomfortable positions. No more should we stand behind anybody. We should stand with them. Side by side. Don't be over. Let me read a few more statistics so we can understand the state of emergency. There are no black owned companies on Wall Street stock exchange. What? I know you thought that uh, Stop up with uh, Magic. Magic. with Magic Johnson no, no. Uh, was one of ours. Right? No, no, no. I'm telling you, uh, they were the star. He was the buck. <laughs> we're constantly begging. Right. We're begging for a job. Right. We're begging for grants. No. And they're tired of us begging. Right. See, uh, Pharaoh let us go. I don't know if y'all knew that. Jeez. But the challenge is we won't let Pharaoh go. Jeez. And he constantly kicking you to the curb, but you keep on running back to him. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. See, they taught you how to be an employee, just like slavery. They taught you how to sit. They taught you how to smile in his face. They gave you how to work to say. They taught you how to dress. They taught you how to look them in the eye. And it's just like the, the parents did back in slavery when the mother taught the child how to stand before the slave master. Right. It's the same thing. So you think the people who put us in this condition gonna teach us in their schools yeah, how to get yeah, out of the condition that we're in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To the press in Boston, in Pittsburgh and Detroit, unemployment is 45 percent in black communities. That means we are not in a recession; we're in a depression. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, here's some solutions, y'all. I don't like to talk about all the problems without the solution. Amen. All right. Create an additional 10% income to black-owned businesses by redirecting 10% of at least 900 billion to black-owned businesses. We would have an additional 92.5 billion in our hands. We must organize 10 to 20% of our people, not all of them, to redirect an additional 10% of our $925 billion consumption power to businesses owned and operated by black people of African descent. What does that do? We'll create at least 100,000 new businesses in the process. Wow. Just one billion spent, says Dr. Webb Evans, among ourselves, will create 50,000 jobs. We will be able to employ our own people. You can't find one, create one. Right. Yes, sir. Tell me, the have been creating businesses right since we started. Yes, sir. We had a young man who was a, 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 a spoken word artist. He couldn't get in college because he had a felony. He didn't know what to do. What we told him, we said, write all your lyrics down, and we're going to place them in book form. 
Then we placed him in the different schools so he can talk and talk to the youth and whatnot. And he started selling his books. Then he got t-shirts. Then we put him before many different audiences and others began to hire him, Pastor Chisholm and everyone else. Now the guy's employed. All right. We created a job for the young man. Yeah. We got to learn how to create a job. Now let me give you some statistics here. By George Kaplan. He's a doctor with a PhD, you know, I don't go to that. But he says this, those who live in disadvantaged neighborhoods have the worst health problems. Wow. There's a large difference in the nutritional choices available between grocery stores and fast food outlets. Right. Food deserts are defined as areas with no or distant grocery stores. In a typical African-American block, the nearest fast food restaurant is right around the corner. Yeah. Right? That means that for African Americans, it's much easier to assess fast food than other types of food. So, as grocery store access decreases, obesity increases. Since obesity can fuel the onset of other diseases and chronic health conditions, the development of grocery stores in underserved areas likely would contribute positively to community health and wellness of African Americans and other groups. Conversely, Living in a food desert can mean greater rates of obesity, premature death, lower quality of life, especially for mothers and children. The diet-related health outcomes that we focus on, cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, and hypertension, they steal time, they steal resources, vitality, and productivity, and they reinforce each other. All of them are connected. You know, with obesity, it is high blood pressure coming next, kidney problems coming next, Diabetes next, and it goes on and on and on with you know, Bajas and Captain Hooks and all of that, but no grocery stores. Right. All fast food stores right. constantly and continually killing us. We propose that we have a food co op. Amen. Oh. Amen. We, we us in the middle call a food cooperative, which is what we've been working on for quite a long time. Not too long, but long enough. But we need you to be a part of it. Now, when we close out, let, let me see this. When we close out, I want you to come and see this young man right here. And we have an application for you to be a part of this food cooperative. Now, let me say a little bit about it. Why a food cooperative? Why? Well, first, you own it, all right? You own the place where you shop. Secondly, distribution of food sources under the control of the members. You become a member of this cooperative. It promotes the availability of healthier foods, such as organic foods and chemical-free foods. In other words, we determine, not Jules, wow. not Dominic, wow. but we determine. And be careful of the Dominic with the sideways spot stick. Uh -oh. You really don't know what you get. Think about another reason we need a food cooperative. We had Chatham Food. It was the only black grocery store in the state of Illinois. Full service. It's gone. Some era or whatever owns it. We had another one called Best Food Market over on 47th, I believe, in Loomis. Full service supermarket. Guess what, y'all? Gone. We only have 11 full-service grocery stores in the United States of America. Did y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We only have 11 full-service grocery stores in the whole United States of America. Why do we have our diet and our food in somebody else's hands? Yet they are feeding us. Because we're not feeding ourselves.